you like last time? What the hell are you doing in my house with that? Um... Lollipop Chainsaw is so stupid, like really stupid. Why the hell would I play a game where a blonde cheerleader sucks on lollipops all day long and kills zombies? Well, cause it's freaking awesome? This is so stupid, it's fun. However, I was only convinced after playing. I'm not your typical fan of, hey Mickey, you're so fine, and the sort of hipster cult pop culture stuff, but damn it, this game started to pull me in. This is my first Suda game and all the nonsensical, campy, batshit crazy stuff that I heard about paid off. How a game like this <laughs> became way more interesting to a person like me is a testament to its inventiveness. Oh, I can't wait for you to shoot the fuck out of stuff with this. Cordelia is like the best big sister ever! Chainsaw, Chainsaw Blaster. Blaster! This game oozes style and substance in every way possible, from its menus to its makes no damn sense but who cares story. You play as Juliet Starling, an 18 year old popular girl blonde cheerleader with a loving boyfriend and zombie hunting lineage. But I'm even more freaked out for him to find out about my family. Because even though they're the most amazing ever, some of our traditions are a little... unusual. Alright, let's get moving! Yeah! Kick some ass! Come on, girl! Kick some ass! Kill me already! Surely drawing comparisons with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Kill him a lot. Now Juliet stands in between us and demons from the rotten world who were summoned here by the school's outcast, Swan. It's your job with help from your family and a pervy sensei. Oh! Yeah! My teacher, Morikawa Sensei, is the most amazing veteran zombie hunter ever. Oh, oh correct. I have studied the zomboid sciences for 40 years. <laughs> to clean up the mess and defeat the zombie horde. Now in this game, there is plenty that can be taken out of context. Juliet and Nick's jokes, some hilarious. Juliet, can I ask you something sort of sensitive? Oh yes, Nick? My face is stuck in your butt. Can you move it a little? Oh. <laughs> Some not so hilarious. Whoa, zombies suck dick at driving. Talking zombies and bosses, often hurling insults at Juliet, using huge amounts of profanity just for the sake of using profanity. So if this kind of stuff gets your panties in a bunch, this game is not for you. You'll likely hate every moment of it because it never lets up. Time to get hardcore, you zombie hunting slut! On the gameplay side, the game does take a little bit of time to ramp up. The first impression isn't so good. It surprised me with how extremely linear the level design is. I couldn't even jump over cars for Christ's sake. Yeah. 
combat felt stiff and Juliet would freeze up when switching from her pom-pom attack animation to her zombie killing chainsaw attacks. There wasn't much variation early on, but I stuck with it. And right around the second level, when you start upgrading Juliet's attacks through online shopping booths that unlock new abilities, music, and sexy outfits, Just after an amazingly creative boss battle with a zombie rocker, after which you meet up with your zombie hunting sister, who's gearing up to fight another menace across town? That's my big sister, Cordelia. Hey, Cordelia! What's up? See you in a few! Right now, I'm gonna go kick some zombie ass! Oh yeah! I almost forgot! The exchange between the girls and the wackiness of everything that has just happened just got to me and I burst out laughing and I never looked back. Enjoying myself the rest of the way. Now Lollipop Chainsaw is strictly a score attack game that is a third person hack and slasher. So know that going in. I got flashbacks of playing Crazy Taxi while rescuing my classmates. And after seeing that I'll be doing battle with five Dark Purveyor bosses, I saw similarities with the vivid style of Scott Pilgrim, with each boss having its own abilities and, and theme. Now as soon as I realized these things, I had to switch my mindset from an action game or adventure game like, like Bayonetta or Devil May Cry to an old Sega arcade beat-em-up. Now when looking at the game like that, your experience will improve tremendously. Sure, it's a pretty standard hack and slash affair that we've all seen before. There's nothing innovative or groundbreaking here, but it definitely gets points for the way in which it does it, its style. An added charge attack will put you into sparkle mode, which will have you decapitating zombies to Mickey you're so fine. So the game breaks up these hack and slash segments with wild and crazy mini games, most of which unfortunately are rather pointless. Like zombie baseball. <sighs> Fuck zombie baseball. Zombie baseball. Aim and shoot at the approaching zombies. Can you score a winning home run? Well, the game's over. Guess that bomb's gonna go off. While you're blown into a million fucking pieces, think we'll wrap things up in the booth. See ya! This awesome sounding but poorly implemented minigame forced me to restart countless times because its auto-targeting lock-on system sucks balls! And it's a real disappointment that all you're doing in the game is shooting zombies before they attack your incredibly slow moving boyfriend who decides he wants to celebrate at every god dang base and moves on his own. Others such as zombie basketball are slightly better but still not the awesomely fleshed out mini games that you might expect. Basketball? Why basketball? Just don't throw my head in the hoop. Most are mechanics like where you can put your, your boyfriend's head on uh, headless zombies. But all that really does is allow him to move around, play a quick time game where he opens a door so that you can get to the next level segment. Gee, awesome! Please, Nick. What am I gonna do, say no? Let's pop you on this! Yes! What? Awesome, Nick! You're the best! Let me take care of this, Juliet. I'll just raise my fist and... Ah! Ah! <laughs> How 
use magic. Finally, there are these chainsaw dash segments which allow Juliet to pretty much drive her chainsaw in a sort of driving track racing mini game. But these always felt really stiff and, and kind of took me out of the fun. I wish there were less segments like these and more like the pole dancing attack bits. Check it out! Can I this alone in my room? I do it naked and get less wind resistance. I, uh, oh, oh. I do it for the exercise. Really? Hey, zombie. Put a dollar in my skirt and I won't kill you. <laughs> Just kidding. I'll kill you anyway. Nick Toss! Go! Go! And this! Believe it! I would have preferred if they kept the focus on action and story, adding more combos, faster, tighter gameplay, with even more mini bosses and the extremely well done boss battles. These are among the best boss battles I've played. Flashy, fun, creative, with multiple segments. I couldn't wait to see what the next Dark Purveyor was to see what kind of special abilities he had. A death metal loving viking who has a flying ship! Mm. Lots of tasty treats for you here, eh, you meal? <laughs> An offensive misogynistic punk rocker whose words and insults turn into real life attacks! A punk rock zombie dead! Welcome to the mosh pit, you zombie hunting sleaze! The game also has a fantastic soundtrack. If Hey Mickey isn't your thing, don't worry. There's also Dragon Force, uh, Five Finger Death Punch. And also some great stuff from his former Silent Hill composer, Akira Yamaoka. If I pronounced that right. I actually wanted to mess around with the customizable soundtracks so that I could listen to the music that I wanted to listen to as I played through the game. If you enjoyed games like Vanquish or Gungrave and you don't mind it being a little bit slower and more score attack oriented, you're gonna love Lollipop Chainsaw. And as this type of game, it's meant to be played over and over, improving your score each time. But unless you're into that sort of thing, you're probably gonna be ready to move on to another game after you're done with the initial playthrough. It's the game's story, style, and visual flair that is the delicious, sweet, gooey center, rather than the combat or the mini game. And at a very short five to six hours, it's hard for me to make that recommendation even with a fun story like this. Hell, I even heard Suda's Shadow of the Damned was 15 hours long, three times the size. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, so weak, so weak, so weak! <laughs> now that is a big boner. So what happened here? I should mention that there are a ton, a ton of unlockables to go through, but it's mostly throwaway stuff like Phone messages from your mom, concept art, and lollipop flavors. Only the alternate costumes are worth anything, and some of those are really cool. The final verdict for Lollipop Chainsaw is a very solid 6 out of 10. The game is like one of those fancy little delectable delicious cupcakes. It's small, it doesn't last very long, but it is rich and sweet as hell. And it's also overpriced for what it is. 
Now, had the game have been priced at something like $40, it would have made a lot more sense for me to make that recommendation to indulge our sweet tooths. Otherwise, if the premise doesn't immediately come out and grab you, then be comfortable in knowing that this is great rental material, if not a solid buy when that price comes down. Even if you don't initially dig the premise. Trust me, it converted me into a Suda fan. It'll convert you too. In fact, I want to go back and play some of his previous games that I heard are longer, more substantial, and arguably better. Until then, I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. Okay, so. Stop. <laughs> Want some lollipop? Oh, no, no, thanks. I, no, I don't, I don't want a lollipop. Oh. <laughs> so sorry. I am so sorry. Get out of here!